Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day. And today's problem is Geekina hit once and it is a hard level problem. So the problem basically gives us two integers n and k and it asks us to have uh, like visualize a series in which at most k bits are set, right? So if the value of k is 1, we should consider all the numbers in which at most k bits are set. Similarly, uh, we have also been given a value n. Our task is to find out the nth number in this particular series in which at most k bits are set. Now, this uh, like task might seem a little bit difficult, but uh, uh, it actually is to some extent, but if you try to break it down into a smaller problem, then you will realize that this problem becomes much, much easier, right? So let us discuss what we will try to do. I'm going to do some pre-computation. That pre-computation array, I have named dp in my code. Doesn't really matter. There is uh, no as such dynamic programming involved. We just have to do some uh, like some pre-computation. So I'm going to create a double dimensional vector pre and k. So this particular number, that is the first index, is denoting what happens if I consider the first n bits. So let me just write it. So I am going to have a pre-computation vector p of i j, where i and j together are denoting the total number of or the total numbers present in the series if I consider till the ith ith bit with at most k bits set, right? So this definition might seem a little bit complex, but it is not at all. So you see, I'll have my pre-computation vector and I'll have two dimensions i and j. So in a, like the binary d presentation of any number, we have these bits starting from 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So i is representing these bits. What happens if I consider till bit 3, right? Till bit 3 and at most k bits are set, right? So the total uh, number of values present in this particular configuration is denoted by pre of ij. So our first question is, how do we calculate this particular thing, right? So let us consider that we are considering till bit i. So till bit i, how many uh, values should be there or how many bits should be there? There should be actually i plus 1. As you can clearly see, till bit 3, there are actually 4 bits, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So there are i plus 1 total number of possibilities, right? Now our task is to figure out with at most k bits, how many values are present. So what we can do, we can figure out in these i plus 1 positions, what, what are the number of ways to place 0 set bits? Then in these i plus 1 configurations, what are the number of ways to place 1 set bit? And in this i plus 1 uh, positions, what are the number of ways to set 2 set bits and then up to i plus 1 c k, right? And obviously, if uh, one of them is greater, we will have to take the minimum. If here at this particular position, I will have to take minimum of k comma i plus 1, right? So basically, I am repeating this particular definition again. My pre of ij is going to denote the number of values that are present in the series if I consider the first i bits with at most j bits set, right? So in this particular case, this, this is actually j. So I can compute each of these positions by doing this particular thing, right? i plus 1 c0, i plus 1 c1, i plus 1 c2 and so on, right? So uh, if you talk about the complexity, it is no, like uh, not going to exceed the time complexity. Let me tell you why. Because if I consider about i, if you, even if you take long long, there will be at least at most 63 positions. And if I talk about j, the value of j is also up to 63 as well. So it is 63 into 63 for the i and j for loops. And to compute this particular part, the summation of all the values, even if you compute it in brute force manner, it is going to be one more for loop of 63, right? So if I show you my code here, you can see uh, there are three for loops, three for loops here. So it is roughly n cube, right? And the value is, uh, in order of 50 here, approximately 50, 60, whatever you can take, right? So this is our whole idea now. Once we have computed this particular pre-computation array, what we have to do is, let's say I want to figure out the first position when I consider at most j bits and my pre of i k is greater than my value of n, which is the required position, right? So what I'm saying is, I am, I am, I will try to figure out the first position i, where if I take the at most k bits, which is k, which is given in the input, my total number of values exceed n, right? 
So let's say once I figure out this particular max position, right? So now what I am going to do is I am going to start from this position till this position is greater than minus one, right? Or till this position is greater than zero. What I am going to do is I know that my current pre of position and k is greater than n, right? But what if pre of position minus one k is less than n, right? So what is this thing denoting, right? Let me just reiterate this fact. I have written two things. The first one is pre pos of k, right? Which I know is greater than n. But what happens if pre of pos minus one and k is less than n? I that basically implies that if I take the first position minus one places or the first position minus one up to position minus one bits right here. So it is zero, one, and so on up to position minus one. If I take these particular bits and I try to set at most k bits in them, then I will never reach this particular number n, right? So if I know this fact that with these number of elements I cannot reach this particular number n, that means I will have to place a one at the current position, right? Otherwise I will never reach this particular number n. So let me just reiterate the fact that I am trying to say. I am saying it if pre of post k is greater than n, right? This is my known fact. Now, if I figure out somehow that pre of post minus one k is less than n, that means if I don't place a one here, I place a zero here, then with these number of bits, I can never reach this particular number n. So my only option is to place one here. So what I'll do? I'll place one here, right? Now, there will be some changes in these values. First of all, the value of k will reduce because uh, like earlier, I had to place at most k bits. Now I can place at most k minus one bits, right? Because I have already placed one bit here. My position is obviously going to decrement. So earlier I was considering this particular array. Now I'm just going to consider these array, this particular array only. And what will be the effect on my value of n? My value of my value of n is also going to change and it is going to get decremented by pre of position minus one and k. So remember, you will have to decrement the value of n first, only then you have to decrement your value of k, right? So you, you must have understood this particular part. This is very, very simple. Why we did this? Because earlier we had k uh, options or we can put at most k set bits. But now since I have put one set bit here, I can only put k minus one. So that is why I have decremented k by one. Now, why have I subtracted this particular part? So you see with this particular configuration, when my position was minus one, my position minus one and k in this particular configuration, I could have made this number of possibilities. But since I did not consider them and this is only possible when my current position has a zero, right? So whenever you think about binary numbers, let's say, let, let me just give you an example. So 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and then uh, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, right? 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? So when I say that this particular number with these bits had four combinations, right? So these four combinations will be when this particular set bit is 0, this particular bit is 0. As soon as this bit becomes 1, these four combinations will have been exhausted. So the problem that we are currently facing is not exactly this particular thing, but this is from where you can derive the idea. It is from where I got the intuition from, right? So that basically means earlier when your bit was zero, you were able to have certain number of combinations, but when your bit becomes one, these old combinations will have to be removed, right? So that is exactly what you do here. So let me just remove all of this. So that is exactly what we have done here. We have subtracted n by pre of post minus one key. So now our problem has essentially reduced to with the first post minus one positions and having at most k minus one bit set, I have to figure out this particular new value of n, right? Now I can that, uh, use this particular bit to add to our answer and then just find out the answer for this remaining value, right? So you see, I've divided the whole problem into a much simpler problem, not actually simpler, but just a smaller sub problem of itself, right? So now I can figure out the answer for this particular sub problem. Now we have to figure out some base case, right? 
One base case or is when this particular position becomes zero, because where it becomes zero, we'll do not have this particular position minus one, right? This is one base case. The other base case is that let's say these this position plus one becomes less than equals to k, right? So why is this particular condition important? Because let's say what is position? By position we denoted the first post bits, so from zero. Two one then up to post right so position one plus one basically denotes the number of bits that we have. If the number of bits that we have is less than the most number of set bits, that basically means we are considering a normal series. So we, let me just give you an example. If I consider four bits, the first four bits like this, right? And if I say that you can set at most five bits, right? When I say that you can set at most five bits, that basically means you are considering all the numbers because here, because no matter what number you take, right? So even if you take the maximum number, it will only have at most four bits set, right? And the maximum number of set bits allowed is five. So basically, what I am trying to say is, whenever your post plus one, that is the total number of bits that you have remaining, becomes less than equal to k, k is the value of the maximum number of bits that you can set, then it basically means that you are following the whole answer, right? Whole answer means that you can consider all the numbers without skipping any of those numbers. For example, in this particular case, the total number of bits available to you were four, and you can set at most five bits. So basically, you can take all the numbers of these series: zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. You don't have to worry about which number you want to take because you can take all of these numbers, right? This is. What I wanted to say. Now, if you are in this particular situation, then the ith number, the ith number or the nth number that you are trying to figure out is actually n minus one. So you can see for one it is zero, for two it is one, for three it is two, and so on. Right. So basically, in this condition, whenever post plus one is less than equals to the value of k, your answer will be n minus one. Right. So this was all about this particular problem. Let me just go through it once again. So I am pre-computing something, and this pre-computing is pre of ij, where pre of ij is going to denote that for the first ith bits, I am going to find out the answer when I am allowed to set more, set at most j bits, right? So for pre of ij is going to basically tell me the number of values that are present in this particular configuration, right? Once I figure out that I am starting from pre of position, so pre of position k is greater than n, and pre of position minus one. K is less than n. This basically means if I do not put a one at the current position in the binary representation, then I will never be able to reach my goal. So whenever I encounter this particular position or this particular condition, I will put a one and then proceed on modifying these values of n and k. How do I modify this? N will be subtracted by pre or post minus one k because these are the number of values that I have already considered. Now my k will have to decrement by one because earlier earlier I was allowed to have at most k bits. Since I have put already put one bit, I will be allowed to put as much my k minus one bits for now, right? Now there was a special base case that I wanted to discuss, and that is when position plus one is less than equals to k. So basically, position was denoting the first post bits. So if the position value of position is three, then I am talking about these bits zero, one, two, and three. So how many bits are total there? Four. So this position one plus one is going to denote the total number of bits. If the total number of bits is less than equals to k. That that means you can basically take any number that you want, right? You have no restriction now because the total number of bits that you can, maximum number of bits that you can take is greater than or equal to the total number of bits that you currently have. So, for example, in this particular case, you have only four places and you can put at most five bits. So, in this particular case, you can basically consider all the number which have four bits. So, if you consider all the numbers which have these number of bits, then your answer will be n minus one. Why n minus one? Because This part uh, for each number, you can see that the va value that is corresponding to is as that minus one position starting from zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the way you can take all the numbers, and if you label them or if you index them, one will start from here, and that is why you have to take n minus one values, right? So this was all about this particular problem. Let me show you the code now. So what I've done is I've created a double dimensional vector. I have taken everything in long long just to avoid any errors and. Uh, The first part is the number of bits, so I have taken it to be sixty-three, and the second part is k plus one, right? Now uh, I'll tell you one very important thing, but first let us discuss this particular thing. What I basically done is I have made a for loop for all the bits, and I have made a for loop for the value of k. Now I am going to start from zero and going till less than i plus one and j. 
right so i am adding plus 1 basically means it is equivalent to writing uh, writing x less than equals to this particular value right so i will have to go up to i plus 1 that is the maximum number of bits and the value of j that is the total number of bits that i want and i'd simply do x plus plus so dp of ij i am adding ncr of i plus 1 x i plus 1 is the total number of bits that i have and x is the number of bits that i can set right so basically i am telling with in these i plus 1 positions what are the number of bits to set x bits now the ncr part is very very simple so basically what i have done is i have just manually computed what we do n factorial divided by uh, n n minus r factorial into r factorial right so i have just manually computed this particular thing with the help of for loops so if you see this particular part i am only going greater than max of r comma n minus r so the idea is let me just write it once so let's say we have n factorial and we have r factorial and n minus r factorial right i am trying to take the maximum among these so let's say let's say we have the value uh, 5 and then we have r uh, the value of r is 2 right so there will be 5 factorial 2 factorial 3 factorial so 5 can be rep represented as 5 into 4 into 3 factorial and then we have 2 factorial into 3 factorial so what i am trying to do is i am trying to cancel out these two values so that is why for the answer for this particular first loop i am going only from n to greater than maximum of r comma n minus r so basically i am only going till here i am only computing in this particular part now for the denominator i am starting from 1 and going till less than minimum of r comma n minus r plus 1 so basically it is equivalent to going to less than equals to minimum of r comma n minus r so like this right so basically i have assumed that these parts will cancel each other out this is just to uh, save any overflow errors otherwise you can only always go up to full length but in this case i believe in certain cases it might give overflow error that is why i have done it like this right now we have computed the denominator and then we can just divide the answer by denominator and just return the answer so we have figured out all the values and stored it in, in this particular dp array which is a pre computation of values right now i have initialized my position with zero and i am going through all the values right so if you carefully look at this particular calculations you will realize that certain values of dp will always overflow no matter what we do but the answer they have uh, like uh, they have said that they have generated the test cases in such a way so that the answer is always will always fit into like uh, the 64 bit that means long long right so what i am trying to do is i am trying to find the first position where dp of ik is greater than n right one way could have been to directly start from 63 but that will not really help me because some values at the end will always overflow so basically i am starting from the first and trying to find out the first position where dp of ik is greater than equals to n right so once i figure out that particular position i am just breaking out from here now i have to start a reverse for loop from this particular position now while position is greater than equals to minus, greater than minus 1 and n is greater than 0 these are my two conditions so the first base case i have put here if post plus 1 is less than equals to k then my answer plus is equals to n minus 1 and then i just break right this is one of the base cases now if position is greater than 0 and dp of post minus 1k is less than n then i am going to do three things first of all i am going to update my answer with answer or one left shift position so as i said i am going to mark this particular bit as set bit right so that is what i am doing here now i am going to update the value of n and i am going to update the value of k so k is equals to maximum of k minus 1 comma 0 right at the end after all of this has been done i can just decrement my position and just return my answer so you see this is how you could solve this particular problem this problem is uh, like again as i said dividing the initial problem into smaller sub problems and then solving them again right so this was it for this particular video let me as quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct i don't know like why it is stuck right now yep so you see this passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct i also made a couple of wrong attempts uh, not a couple of wrong attempts but actually too many wrong attempts on this particular problem i was actually uh, writing this particular part uh, incorrectly so that is why i had those wrong attempts but the solution that i have explained right now is absolutely correct i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really really helps the youtube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems so that is it for today till the next video drop keep coding stay safe bye bye